questions we get asked a lot is, is what's a black hole? It seems to be a, a very sort of common um, question that people have. It's one of those bits of science that people know at least the word black hole, but they maybe don't understand what the, what the object actually is. Now, every object in the universe has gravity, has a, has a mass, and every object in the universe attracts every other object in the universe. And obviously the really big things, planets, stars, galaxies, that kind of thing, have a lot more gravitational pull than small things like human beings. So, for example, if we want to send a rocket off the face of the Earth, off the surface up to, up to space, we need to travel about 11 kilometers per second. That's the escape velocity of the Earth. And that's due to the fact that the Earth has mass and it has a size, so it has a sort of a density, if you like. And the higher the density of an object and the higher its mass, the higher the speed you need to go to get off the, the, the surface. So if we took the Earth and we crushed it down and we kept its mass but we made it smaller and smaller and smaller, the escape velocity would get higher and higher and higher. And there would come a point where if we crushed the Earth down to about the size of a 5 pence, maybe a 10 pence piece, the escape velocity would go from 11 kilometers a second like it is as the Earth is today to something like the speed of light. Now, Einstein tells us the speed of light is the speed limit of the universe. Nothing can go faster than light in a vacuum, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. That's roughly seven and a half times around the Earth every single second, so it's, it's pretty quick. So if you crush the Earth down to the size of, say, a 5 or 10 pence piece, the escape velocity you need to travel at to get off the Earth becomes equal to the speed of light. Nothing can travel that fast, not even light can go faster than that, therefore light can't escape from the surface of this object. Now, we're normally dealing with black holes when they're in star systems or in galaxy systems rather than, than crushed planets. So typically a black hole might be three, four, five kilometers across. An object of that sort of size might weigh 10, 20, 30 times the mass of the sun. Now, obviously seeing a black hole is very, very difficult. Light can't escape from a black hole. So what we see is the effect a black hole has on neighboring material. And in particular, what we're looking at is the effect that a black hole has on a nearby star. Now, in these sort of systems called binary systems, where you have two objects, two stars originally, one of them has died and become a black hole, the other one is still there. But it is being dramatically affected by the presence of the black hole, by the fact that there's this enormous hole in space, if you like, nearby with an incredible gravitational field. And what happens is the black hole rips material off the normal star and, and drags that material down towards itself. And as that material falls in towards the black hole, it gets very, very hot. You get friction. The material falling from the normal star towards the black hole rubs against other material, gets hotter and hotter. And when it reaches temperatures of maybe a million degrees or more, you get x-rays emitted. And now these are emitted from outside the black hole, so they don't violate this idea that nothing can escape from a black hole. So surrounding a black hole, you have this huge swirling disk of material, a huge gas cloud that's kind of like water going down a, a plug hole almost in a, in a sink. And that material is emitting enormous amounts of x-rays before it finally plunges over the what we call the event horizon, the edge of the black hole, and disappears forever. So what we look for are stars that appear to be moving around all by themselves in space. So they're orbiting around an invisible object, which would be the black hole we can't see. But in particular, they're also finding huge amounts of x-ray emission being given off from, from that area as well. And that would be the material heating up as it falls into the black hole. So those are the kind of giveaways for spotting black holes. And we observe in particular about 40 or 50 systems in our Milky Way galaxy that we think are like this, that have a, a star being cannibalized, if you like, by a black hole. The other place we come across black holes is at the center of galaxies. Uh, and we think most galaxies, if not all galaxies, have a, what we call a supermassive black hole at the center. Um, this is an object that weighs millions or billions of times the mass of the Sun, and in terms of physical size, it's bigger than our solar system. We're looking at something which would be from where the center of the Sun is all the way out to the orbit of Pluto and, and the dwarf planets and the comets beyond that. Now, those black holes are absolutely enormous, and we think they're almost the seeds around which galaxies form. And the galaxies themselves are full of gas and dust and stars, and roughly one solar mass a year, one Sun a year, is being consumed by some of these galaxies. And the x-rays that are given off from those systems are obviously much brighter than the ones that we see in the, in the small scale versions in our Milky Way. And they give off huge amounts of x-ray and gamma ray radiation. We call these things active galaxies or quasars, for example, as a, a sort of slightly more commonly used word for that. So we do see black holes out there. The theory sort of tells us what we should see. We look out and we see exactly the sort of things that are predicted. But basically a black hole is an object for which the escape velocity is equal to or greater than the speed of light. And that's the speed limit of the universe. That's a black hole.